Good evening, everyone. We begin with a News Channel 5 investigation that's raising questions about how a man with a troubled work history was able to get hired as a police officer. Investigative reporter Ben Hall took an in-depth look at the career path of an officer sued in connection with an inmate's death in Marshall County, and he found a long history of discipline. Ah! The disturbing video went viral. Stay down, you stupid son of a it shows several officers subdue William Jeanette, who refused to get into a restraint chair in the Marshall County Jail. Christopher Stallings' body cam shows him on Jeanette's back after he was handcuffed and in leg restraints, saying he could not breathe. <laughs> Jeanette's last words were, I'm good. Stallings quickly responded. Oh, you ain't good. You gonna lay right there for a minute. And as we first reported, a month before Jeanette's death, the department suspended Stallings for two days for yelling at a 10-year-old girl and putting her in handcuffs. You better be glad that these are your parents because you come at me that way, you walking away with a busted head. The department found Stallings escalated the situation and got into an argument with a 10-year-old. You want to fight like a grown woman? I will treat you like a grown woman, which means I will bust your head. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Get her shoes on her before I lose my temper. Before becoming a police officer in Lewisburg, Stallings had a troubled history as a corrections officer in both Davidson and Bedford counties. In Davidson County in 2011, a fellow officer said, I am in fear. I feel threatened. I do not feel safe in that hallway with him. The department separated the two, and Stallings received a written reprimand. In 2012, he was suspended for five days after he intentionally poked holes in coffee cups and placed them on the table for inmates to use, allowing hot coffee to pour through the holes. In 2013, Stallings was suspended for 24 hours, two full shifts, after admitting to losing his temper and taunting and cursing an unruly inmate. His supervisor blasted his behavior, writing he potentially caused the incident to escalate. A few months later, Stallings resigned, effective immediately, after yet another suspension for sleeping on duty. Stallings wrote, due to recent circumstances and situations partly beyond my control, I feel it is necessary to terminate my employment. The sheriff's office accepted his resignation and noted he is not eligible for rehire. Even though Stallings could no longer work as a jailer here in Davidson County, one of his supervisors wrote him a glowing letter of recommendation which he used to get a job as a jailer in Bedford County in 2014. But the very next year, a fellow Bedford County officer reported that Stallings was cussing and yelling at an unruly inmate and pushed him down to the ground while he was handcuffed. After that, a supervisor told Stallings his employment at the jail was not working. The supervisor wrote, at that time, Officer Stallings stated that he would resign. He did not want his separation to read that he was terminated for an unsatisfactory job performance. Despite all that, Stallings applied to the Tennessee Law Enforcement Training Academy in 2017 and became certified as a police officer. Police officers wield an enormous amount of power over the lives of everyday Americans. Duke University law professor Ben Grunwald has published articles calling for a national database listing disciplinary issues for people in law enforcement, even corrections officers. And I think it's just as important for us to be tracking um, this kind of stuff for corrections officers as it is for law enforcement. He says every state has its own laws regarding what is reported about the disciplinary histories of police officers. In Tennessee, the Peace Officer Standards and Training Commission, or POST, serves as the primary regulatory body for law enforcement. They must be notified when police officers are suspended 15 days or longer, or if they resign in lieu of termination. So there's no reason to arbitrarily say if it's a suspension below 15 days, then we don't track it. And sheriffs must report those things about deputies, but they do not have to report them about jailers. Suppose did not know about Stallings' work history as a corrections officer when he went on to become a police officer. Because if we're hiring officers who've done bad things in the past, that's one of the easiest predictors to know that they're going to do bad things in the future. So when Lewisburg hired Christopher Stallings, there was no state record of his history as a corrections officer. And when he resigned from Lewisburg a week after the death of William Jeanette and a month after getting suspended for handcuffing a 10-year-old, neither would have been on his state record. Six months after leaving Lewisburg, Stallings was hired by the Mount Pleasant Police Department, 
which called him their top applicant. We've learned Stallings has resigned from the city of Mount Pleasant Police Department in an agreement that gives him two weeks severance and overtime pay. In his resignation letter, he wrote he's leaving because of the current political climate and our continuing coverage. He wrote he did not want to damage the department's reputation. The city manager called him an exemplary employee in the time he's been there. Stallings ended the letter saying he will seek future employment in law enforcement or elsewhere. Ben Hall, News Channel 5, investigates.